All right, so TNA's first pay-per-view of the year, Genesis. Uh, we've got the... Well, you know what? Let's go through the matches, how they actually happened. Uh, as far as I know, Mike and I are the only ones that saw this, actually, right? Yep. They didn't get a chance. Bra- uh, Braden didn't get a chance, so... Uh, well, I, I had plenty of chances. I just chose not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally well, forgot well, it was on Sunday, and then I didn't end up catching up on it. I am, I am <laughs> you guys. booking his room and and telling people on Facebook how great he is. Again, fuck Ultimate they, Warrior. Yeah, they fuck you. Just telling you now. <laughs> so the first match of the night, I gotta say, I actually liked it a lot. It was the X Division title match between Austin Aries, Kid Cash, Zima Ion, and Jesse Sorensen. Uh. I thought that this was going to be the match of the night, and it ended up being the match of the night as far as I'm concerned. Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, I'm not going to break down every single thing, single thing that happened in this. You guys can read the review on the website. Uh, just basic thoughts. I liked that match, and then it kind of went downhill ever since then. What do you think, Mike? It was a great match. Um, you know, I wanted to see Austin Aries drop the belt. As I said to you before, because I believe he's literally better than the X Division now. You know, he's gotten to that level where he, he's at mid-card, so he might as well. He could easily bring some meaning back to the television championship. Uh, you know, they I think that wasn't the case because they want him to carry the division a lot longer. Um, but it was, you know, it was very fast-paced. The spots were hit very nicely. It was literally a clinic going on with all these guys, so... As far as I'm concerned, you know, highly match the night. Then we went to a backstage segment between Borash and Devon's kids and the Pope, where everybody kind of stumbled over their words, and it was kind of pointless, which led to uh, the Devon versus Pope match, and uh, typical kind of things where the kids don't want to turn on their dad, and then Pope gets pissed, and then, you know, Devon wins five pinfall. Uh, not really awful, not really great. I would have personally had uh, the kids not lay out Devon and then Pope lay out the kids and then Devon go to check out the kids and Pope win by capitalizing on that. But they apparently thought it was better to just have Devon win and, you know, whatever. Thoughts? There's no elevation with this. Um, they, As you said, Pope should have got the win, especially because of the fact they dragged the storyline out for long. It was the longest running storyline in TNA. I want to just react, you know, reassert that fact. Um, Pope should have got it. That was a silly move. What are you, what else are you going to do with Devon? You're not really going to do anything else with him. You're not going to elevate him to like any sort of status. So you've just wasted a, a slew of talent, really. Then we had the Gunner versus RVD match went down pretty much how people expected, with RVD being I laid was out. On the money on that. And I was so on the money. That was. The, basically, the match existed for that to happen, and uh, it's kind of hard to grade that. I didn't really like it a whole lot. Um, well, basically, you I remember you were saying to me that you wanted RVD to go over, or at least, you know, uh, the feud to continue. But, but if there's well, no feud now, then there's no point in having RVD win. So, you know. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think the whole process of that match was to get Gunner over, which it accomplished even though it sucked. Um, you know, but I think now they're just going to have RVD sit his rest of his contract at home. Well, a lot um, of people are expecting well, him to show up at the Royal Rumble. I personally don't think it's going to happen, but I wouldn't be too contract, surprised if it did. His contract's still um, valid then. Oh, it is? Oh, well, then it won't. Yeah, he'll be in breach <laughs> if he shows up. Unless they buy him out, but I doubt that that's going to happen. He's RVD. They're not going to really care too much. Yeah, um, I don't think Vince is going to do anything to help TNA. Nope. Then we went to the Knockouts Championship match. Gail Kim defeating Mickey James after uh, Madison tosses two pairs of brass knuckles down from a cage that she was suspended from. And, uh, you know, it's uh, the way that I put it on the website was it's the better women's wrestling match than you're going to see out of both companies probably in this entire month. So I'll give them credit for that. Well, having um, Velvet Sky's knockout law was pretty awesome um even though i don't really understand why she even went for that job in the first place 
because she's an active wrestler and, and knockout law is sort of someone who governs the division rather than actually um, wrestles in it. But, you know, it's a positive. The match didn't blow chunks, so that was another positive. Um, it did what it was supposed to do. And so that, led us, now, that led us to the Monsters Ball Abyss versus Bully Ray match. Uh, Bully Ray, I got to say, man, he's, he's one of their best guys now, which is so odd for me to say because... Back in his WWE tenure, he was the tag team guy, not anything close to a main eventer in TNA. I mean, he's one of the best on the mic, and he's solid in the ring for what they use him for. Like, these hardcore spots were entertaining in this match. So, you know, there's been better in the past, but it was fun, whatever. Yeah, for me, um, Bully's been gold. And I've said this before, the guy should have been in the main event instead of um, sitting there stagnating on the sidelines. So I think they're, they're going to use this to sort of push him forward again. In terms of Abyss, uh, Abyss versus Bully Ray, the match was just a spot fest, a huge spot fest, and did nothing to get either guy over. So it was there for the point of, you know, making people go, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Which it accomplished. I'll give him credit for that. Yeah. Uh, then we had the tag team championship, Crimson and Matt Morgan defeating Samoa Joe and Magnus. A generic sort of match. Uh, the only thing about it that I thought was kind of odd was Samoa Joe and Magnus got a little bit more offense than I thought that they were going to. I figured it was going to be basically a squash, but it was sort of a 50-50 split. Uh, there was another part in it where the fans were chanting, we want Morgan, and then half of them were chanting, no, we don't, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> uh but, you know, I mean, going into this, you had to see Crimson and Morgan retaining. So that wasn't a shock at all. Well, they're now continuing uh, the storyline between these two teams on impact. So it looks like Magnus and Joe had to look strong in order to continue the feud. So they've done the right thing with it. Um, not surprised by the way it ended. And I only see Mag, I only see like um, Crimson and Morgan hold that those belts for another few months before eventually dropping it to uh, another to feud team. With, and to feud with each other, of course. Yeah, of course. So then we had James Storm losing to Kurt Angle. Uh, the well, let me say this: I liked the end of the match because the end of the match was Kurt Angle hitting a low blow on James Storm and winning that way after he had just been talking about how James Storm wrestles like a bar fight and he's a wrestler and everything like that. So it's a hypocritical thing. I didn't like it when it comes to they knew how they were going to book the main event, and I'll get to that in a second. But, uh, you know, when you have Kurt Angle and James Storm, they're going to at least give you a decent match, which I thought that it was perfectly fine. Uh, I kind of want this to continue a little bit, but they need to throw something else in there, maybe a gimmick or something like that. So what do you think? I would say they need to throw in a gimmick match for it. The match was okay. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't as great quality as the match prior. Um, all I'll say is just keep continuing it and keep continuing to elevate James Storm because that's all Angle can do. He's, you know, after all the bullshit he's been throwing at people's faces, he needs to start elevating talent. And then... The final match of the night, Bobby Roode defending his title against Jeff Hardy. Didn't like it. Uh, Standard kind of, a lot of twist of fate reversals and everything like that. And then the match ends with another low blow. And what pissed me off about this pay-per-view is there were about 10 low blows in in this pay-per-view between all the matches. And if you're going to have Kurt Angle as one of your top heels win your secondary main event with a low blow that the ref doesn't catch... You don't have the next match of the night as the heel does a low blow and the ref just disqualifies him. You don't do too many low blows in the same pay-per-view. It's a pay-per-view. Even if you did it on an episode of uh, Impact or Raw, it would still be, why are you doing so many repetitive things? So I uh, I definitely saw Bobby Roode keeping the title, so that didn't shock me. And then that they're doing this with... Jeff Hardy winning the match by DQ is another reason for them to have a rematch. I understand that, but I think they could have gone out of this so, so much better. And it's really a disappointment. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was, I didn't expect much out of it, especially when it comes to Hardy, but it, it, 
and I don't believe it was worthy of being a main event. You know, but it's just furthering the storylines that are going on at the moment. So, you know, it was no okay way to end the pay-per-view. All right, so out of that, my blind predictions of the pay-per-view without watching uh, TNA Impact, I got two wrong and all the rest right, which I think is pretty damn good considering. I got uh, all the rest wrong and one right. <laughs> <laughs> so that actually does us for episode 11 of Smack Talk. Next week, we're going to go over a little bit more Royal Rumble stuff if they introduce some more people that are going to be guaranteed entrance, uh, talk about whatever happens during the week, maybe some little predictions here and there, I don't know, typical old segments of some hot tags, some ask hymns, a bunch of other nonsense like that. So thank you guys once again for being on the show. Any last thoughts? Yeah, um, just remember to check out my blog, www.nerdgenius.com. Um, it's N-E-R-D-G-E-N-I-O-U-S dot com. And also I've got some new projects coming up for um, the Nerd Genius site and also in terms of uh, wrestling. So stay tuned for that. And, uh, you know, don't forget to follow me on the app Michael Burhan on Twitter. And uh, subscribe to my Facebook and my YouTube. Brain and Face. Oh, well. <laughs> it's just uh you know it's a pleasure to be on here i look forward to do it next week it's always fun i guess we'll build more towards the royal rumble match itself as we get a little bit closer to it give maybe some thoughts maybe some predictions as we get closer to the event and uh yeah i hope uh, to have this much fun next week it's a pleasure anything to plug dude uh, i guess i could plug my youtube uh, at www.youtube.com slash spoodbeast I usually post uh, videos on, you know, pro wrestling or video games on there. So, yeah, that's about it. Ace, you want to uh, load us off tonight? <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, fuck Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Lillian Garcia. And if any of you trolls out there want to come see me, I will be in St. Louis for the Royal Rumble. And I will tell you to your face that the Ultimate Warrior sucks. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so... Ace, I love you and I hate you at the same time. Just want to let you know that. <laughs> So this has been another smart out moment and we're being counted out. See you next time. This is the outro. Oh hey. This is the outro. Please do an outro. This is the outro. This is the outro. Somebody do an outro. Somebody do an outro. Somebody do an outro. Somebody please do an outro.